Today I'm going to be using these two machines to make more parts. This machine is the one that I showed before. This machine is a machine I haven't shown before, but is able to do much larger parts because it can handle larger molds. So as I mentioned in, in the introduction, I'm going to be using both of these machines today. I'll be using this machine in the beginning, which you've seen before, that I had in my previous episode. This machine is my Traven TP1. It's a British-made machine that is able to handle larger molds. And one of the, the things is, uh, one of the parts that I'm making is too large to be able to fit into the dimensions of this machine here. So I have to make it on this machine. Now, if you look here, you can see that this is a dryer hose. I have this connected to a fan, and then I have a vent, which is an air conditioner vent designed to go into a window for portable air conditioners. And that allows me to vent the fumes from the melting plastic to the outside. Uh, it's really important that you do that. The fumes are toxic, they're not good to breathe, so the more venting you can do, the better. As in the last video, I'm using a 1 8 inch dowel pin to hold the mold halves in alignment. These days I use uh, quarter inch dowel pins, and I'm going to be switching to a better alignment system for future molds. But this does a good enough job because the mold is wide enough, so it holds it well in alignment. Then I want to set the end stop so I don't have to visually align the mold underneath the nozzle each time. I like to start with the injection pressure lower than it needs to be because I don't want to have a flash and push the mold halves apart. So I know this is going to be a short shot and what I want to do from here is do a number of shots and each time slowly increase the injection pressure until I have a consistent filled shot. This didn't even come close to filling the mold, so I added more pressure. And then I had to go through a number of iterations. If you look carefully, you'll notice that with each iteration, the amount of fill is a little bit more. And this last one was almost completely filled. And then finally, we have a filled part, and I can set the counter to zero, and then start making parts. This mold, by the way, is uh, the first of four molds I'm going to be doing today, and is the small HO scale tank end. Switching to the large HO scale tank end, I have to again set the pressure. You'll notice that it doesn't completely fill the mold, which is the same as before. So I have to adjust the pressure a few times until it fully fills the mold. And then it's time to start making parts. My Traven TP1 can handle much thicker molds, which is useful if you're going to use ejector pins, and this does support ejector pins. Um, I'll show that in a future video. What I'm doing here is I'm loosening the end of this, and you can slide the clamp left and right, which I'm doing here, so I can get it that it's just right. And what I want is I want it so that it's a little bit hard to push it uh, over the center stop for the toggle, and what that tells me is that I've got the maximum clamping force that I can get, which is about uh, four and a half tons. At this point, I decided instead of trying to move the clamp farther to the right, I would just take another piece of uh, material from the mold that I decided not to use anymore and just put that in there to get the right thickness. So now it's easy to adjust the screws so that it's a little tight there. And then what I want to do is uh, tighten down this post as much as I can. The screws are not meant to carry all the load, so this is carrying most of the load and the screws just keep it from moving. Now what I want to do is test this and uh, it's a little too easy to close, so I want to loosen this up and then use the screws, once I've loosened this up, to push the clamp a little bit more to the right and then test it again. And when I test it again, it should be a little hard to uh, clamp it uh, takes uh, me pushing one hand against the bench for leverage and the other hand against the clamp and then that is giving me the maximum clamping force of I believe four and a half tons. So you can see here I'm pushing really hard 
and that's much better. To accommodate different mold geometries, there is a set screw here I can loosen, and then I can move the entire assembly, the injection assembly left and right, to get the nozzle centered over the hole in the mold. And then once I have it uh, centered over the hole, I can go back and I can tighten the screw, and I'll be all set to inject. First I had to purge some plastic that was in the barrel before, and I went through quite a few of these purging cycles before I emptied out all of the old plastic. And of course I have a, a fan on to exhaust the fumes to the outside. To add more plastic to the barrel I pushed this lever, which is allowing plastic from the hopper to flow into the barrel. As I mentioned before, pushing the toggle over center does require a bit of force, but I want to get the full clamping pressure from the, the clamp. And then I can inject it and see how it goes for the first time. After a few seconds I can release the clamp and then I can pull the mold out of the machine, pull it apart and see how I did. Now one thing that happens if you look carefully you can see the dowel pin fell out. This is a problem of using the dowel pins with the holes drilled all the way through. It's also a short shot so I need to add more pressure. As you may have heard there, it took a little bit of force to get the clamp over center. So now I'm injecting again and uh, let's see how it turns out after adding more pressure. So we'll pull it out of the machine, pull the mold house apart, and it looks good. So we should be able to count that one. Bring the counter over, set it to zero, and, and then give it a nice push for one part. Now, at this point I realized that the dowel pin, which you probably saw there, snuck underneath the traven, and I can't get to it with my fingers. So I have to pull something out to get it out there. This is one of the problems with the dowel pins, as I mentioned, and I don't design molds this way anymore. For this very reason, because I'm <laughs> chasing dowel pins all the time. Now I want to take a look, make sure it's completely filled, there's no flash around the edges, and now that I've determined it's fine, I can count this part. And now I can get into the groove of making parts. Uh, this is about the same speed as making the parts on the smaller machine, um, but as you can see, it's able to make larger parts than the other machine. After I finished this video segment, I turned the camera off and moved it out of the way, put on my headsets, and started listening to the With Intolerance podcast again. For these larger molds, I have uh, small air vents built into them, so if you look here, you can see a tiny puff of the smoke coming out from the plastic. So this part here is pretty close to the maximum size that I can make on the Traven injection molding machine. And to explain why, let me take a look at the diameter of this. You can see that the diameter is on the order of one and a half inches. And if I do the math to convert this to cross section, which is one, what's important, I get about two square inches of cross section. Now the reason the cross section is important is because the molten plastic in here is going to be pushing outwards like that against the mold halves. There's a rule of thumb that says you want, you need, I should say, between two and two and a half tons of clamping force for every square inch of cross section. So this has on the order of uh, two square inches of cross section, which means we need a clamping force of between four and five tons. The clamping force on the Traven is four and a half tons. So this part here is right at the limit of what that machine can do with a four and a half ton clamping force. 
This next part is too large to be able to be clamped with the clamping force of this machine. I calculated the cross section of this part to be about 2.8 square inches, which means the clamping force that I would need would be 5.6 to 7 tons, well above the 4.5 tons of clamping force available on this machine. So I'm using screws to hold the mold halves together. These are screws in aluminum, and you know over time it produces a lot of aluminum dust, etc. So you'll see later on perhaps my hands getting uh, pretty dirty from this. And this is also pretty slow. I was doing over 100 parts an hour before, but I timed this and it takes on the order of a minute and a half per part with adding the screws and removing the screws. So that means my production cycle time, or I should say the number I can make per hour, has dropped to on the order of 30 or 40 parts per hour. And what that means is the cost per part is going to go up. But this is absolutely a trick that you can use if you need to make parts that are larger than your machine can handle. It's just you have to take into account that it's going to be a lot more time consuming and factor that into the cost of making the parts. I didn't back the screws out all the way, which I probably should have. It would have made it easier to get the part out. Now inspecting the part, I noticed just a tiny bit of a witness mark on the front as a result of it not having a complete fill. So I increased the pressure a little bit and then it's back to putting the screws in and trying it again. I could speed this process up by using the high speed mode of the drill instead of the low speed mode. Uh, or the high torque mode. Right now I'm using the high torque mode and I have the clutch set to disengage at as low a setting as I can, but it still sometimes tries to twist the mold out of my hand. So there's kind of a balance between it twisting the mold out of my hand and going quickly. And I don't have to make a lot of these parts, so I'm just going toward making sure that I can make the parts and not worrying about efficiency. But if you wanted to worry about efficiency, you might even have two drills, one with high speed, one with low speed, and switch back and forth between them so you can open and close the molds a lot faster. Now this is something else I discovered later I didn't have to do. I was using an Allen wrench to initially break loose the screws because I, I from previous experience I had some molds where the drill didn't have enough uh, force to be able to loosen the screws. Uh, I discovered later that uh, this does, so there's no reason to use the Allen wrench and that does speed things up. And by the way, once I stopped using the Allen wrench, that's what I measured to be about a minute and a half for the cycle time. And we have a good part. So we can count this and then start production and uh, make a bunch of these. Time to put the headphones on and just get into the groove. I hope you enjoyed this episode and got a chance to learn more about the Traven. I do plan to do another, at least one more uh, video on the Traven in the future. I used this machine to make some parts that required ejector pins. That was my first experience with uh, a real ejector pin plate and sliding back and forth. So I'd like to show that to you, which I will do in a future video. Please help me grow the channel, which you can do by subscribing, clicking the like button, giving me a thumbs up in other words, 
commenting below. And if you are a subscriber and want to be notified when I have new videos, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.